Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be doing a DSG build on Trevor Sema Platinum. Um, we have multiple different parts that we're putting in to make this a DSG, but um, I'm just going to be walking through this video with you guys to show you guys how to actually build a DSG. Okay, so this is the inside of Trevor's gun. He actually has an HP trigger that he has bought for his micro switch so he can preset it, which is actually really good with a uh, DSG because you can actually get snap your shots off. Um, the parts we're going to be putting in it is a Rocket Tech DSG gear. We are also going to be putting a customized Rocket Tech piston in. And we are going to be putting a Guardian V2 tappet plate along with um, a ASG Ultimate M135 spring and a Crytek 30k torque motor. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the trigger out and we're going to take our other, the, our bevel gear out, our anti-reversal switch, and take the piston and the tappet plate out. Okay, so once you actually have all your parts off, you can go ahead and take your tappet plate along with your cylinder and piston out. So go ahead and take your piston out and then take your tappet plate with your cylinder out. Sit that aside. Now what we're going to do is we can take these other gears out and if your gun's like his, your bearings are going to come out. And then you just take those off and pop those back in. Super easy. Okay, so the parts that we won't need anymore is the SEMA SSG gear, and but we will need the DSG gear. So what you're going to want to do is take your tappet plate off your cylinder and cylinder head, and actually put that back in, and put your spur gear back in, put your, sec your new DSG sector gear in, and you're going to put your, um, uh, actually, if you have metal teeth on your piston, you're going to actually put this back in. And then what we're going to do is line the gear up so it starts to pull the gear back. And then we're actually going to be cutting these teeth off. So if you take a marker and mark the tooth right after where the gear meets, which would be right here. So we're just gonna mark that. You just have to make sure you get it and get it marked somewhere. And then you're actually going to cut all of these other teeth off because you will not be using those anymore. Now, theoretically, you can actually just cut these two teeth off right here and leave the other ones if you don't feel comfortable with cutting them all off, but it's easier if you just cut them all off. So we're gonna do that and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead with my parental supervision and cut down these teeth. I marked them down and I cut them down with an angle grinder to cut them down flush so you just have these. Now again, I said you can just cut those two down and leave the other ones if you want to, but it's much easier if you just cut all of these down and not have any. So now when you put it in, it should just catch, spin, and then shoot down and won't use any of those other teeth because the way that it has a shorter pool, so when it comes back, this is as far back as it's gonna go instead of coming all the way back. And then once it releases, it'll shoot forwards and that's what gives you your compression for your BBs. Now, the next step is to take our Guardian Taffet plate and um, cut this down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this blue nozzle from the other Taffet plate Put on this tappet plate, put it on the cylinder head, and then there's an O-ring. And then we're going to put this in here. Make sure it's all the way forwards. 
and we're actually going to cut this down about halfway so about where this middle pin is we're actually going to cut down from there so again take a marker mark it off halfway across there doesn't have to be a perfect line and then you're just going to take it i would cut a little bit before it just in case you cut too much off because if you cut too much off it's not gonna work so just cut a decent amount but right before your line cut that off careful it's gonna shoot everywhere and hit somebody in the head and then put the cylinder head back on stick it back on here and back forwards now what you're going to want to do is spin it make sure this comes down but when it's like this so if this is done the easiest way i did to check this is have this all the way back to where the last gear that's supposed to be there hits and which would be right hold on put this back right here so when this shoots off put your tappet plate back forwards well this is still back and as long as there's a gap here well this is up here you'll be perfectly fine and it'll act you'll shoot your bbs that's why i said you don't want to take too much off so you're actually going to mark like just a tiny bit before the line and cut off there now the next step is going to be um actually cleaning the gun and then re-oiling it now this isn't really an important step i mean you want your gun to be oiled but it doesn't have to be over oil and so what you're going to do is you're just going to clean this because you can see that's really oiled and too much oil can actually like stop your gearbox from spinning so what i'm just going to do is take some tissues and watch out for the shims there aren't any on this side because they're all on the gears then just take it and clean it off and then we will go through the step of re-oiling everything now the other side is actually just completely fine and what we're going to do now is re-oil it with i would say special oil but it's not necessarily special because i don't do anything special to it oh well, there's two shims there um, so what I actually use is I use my Crossman Pelgun oil that I use on my other guns with a mixture of the Evi con high concentrate silicone oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, you really only need it here, put like two, three dots there, and then put some dots of the CO2 oil there because when they mix together, they actually make a really good combination. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this spur gear and put shim on the bottom and then put back down here and you're gonna spin it around a little bit to make sure it spins. Now we're going to oil the up here where the piston slides. So actually do it on the rail, put a couple drops of silicone oil and then a couple drops of the co2 oil and not do that on both sides of your gearbox this will give you the best compression for your piston because it's going to make it slide a lot easier in and out and so it's just going to make the piston slide a lot easier in general. And another thing that you're going to want to do is the gears that actually come with your gun, if you're using a SEMA, are actually 13-1 gears already. So what that means is if you p try putting your DSG gear with the already gear that's on here, it will not fit. See how it's raised up and just spins and grinds and then comes off? That is because this is a 13-1 spur gear and that will not work with your um, DSG gear because the way the gear set is. Now, if you buy a Siege Tech 10-1 or 13-1 DSG gear off Evike, the one that actually comes with like the whole set of all of them, that will work because there were... 
fabricated so they all work like all together and you can have a super fast gun so they are a little bit on the pricey side but they are worth it because they're the best gears ever i'm pretty sure they're made out of titanium and so they will literally last you forever so so now what you're gonna want to do is put and actually put another shim on top of here and then you're gonna take your DSG gear and put some CO2 oil on it, not the silicone oil. Just put a tiny bit on this bottom peg, on the sides of it, and then some on the top of the side of the peg, and then actually along here, just put like two dots, because that's actually where it spins. So then you're just going to stick this on here and spin it around, and that spins through there super nice, super slick. And next step is going to be, I'm not gonna show you guys how to reshim your gearbox because I'm not going to. Now, what you're gonna do is make sure you have shims on this on the bottom and top and shims on here. Now on here, actually we do need to put a shim on the bottom of here just to give that a little bit more lift off there. Yeah, that's better. Now what we're gonna do, we're just going to go ahead and take our tappet plate spring, put on our tappet plate, and put our tappet plate and piston and cylinder head and cylinder all back on. So, okay, all that is on there. So one of the things we're actually gonna have to do with this SEMA is we're actually going to have to um, cut down the tap it plate because the way they slide on here is different. Uh, will we? We might. Hold on. Okay, so we're actually not going to. Let me see with my light. Um, yeah, we're actually not going to have to trim this one down you can see this one has those trim marks so you could theoretically put these on here and see the size difference i mean there is a size difference but it's not going to do anything different for your gun if you want to go ahead and trim your tap and plate down you can but it's going to be a very complicated task and i've already done a complicated task for today so i'm not going to now you can just go ahead and put your tappet plate and cylinder, cylinder head back in, along with your piston. Make sure everything gets lined up. And now you can go ahead, and put your anti-reversal latch back on. And then grab your bevel gear with your two shims on it. Put that back where it goes. And now you're gonna put the trigger in if you have an HPA set trigger, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because especially if it's already set, it's going to be complicated to put in because the way the spring lines up with it. So what you're going to do is put your spring back in to your trigger. You took it off and then put it back on. And I'm probably going to end up screaming because I hate doing this. But I will catch you guys when I actually get this back in. Alright guys, so I got everything put back together. And I went ahead and put the um, frame back together. Now you just need to go and put your screws on. And then go ahead and put your spring on. And then we'll go ahead and put the motor on. Okay, so um, what we're actually going to do now is put the frame on. What you have to do is if you have an HPA trigger, if you don't have an HPA trigger, um, you're just going to put, or if you don't have one, you don't have to cut this, but if you do, you have to go ahead and cut this down to make it big enough so that you can go ahead and put your gearbox in. And it actually is going to fit in a lot better because of the trigger so um go this way just have to make sure this is on semi so you can 
do this and mangle this around so it gets in to the frame. Okay, after more extensive cutting, um, we actually got this in. So now you're gonna put your two pins in and then go ahead, put your hand guard back on and then we will put your motor in. Okay, now that we have our motor grip on, we're going to be putting this Crytac 30K Torque motor in. So I'm just gonna stick this in there like any other motor. Then attach your wires. Okay, so once you get that on there, you can go ahead and put your cover back on. We will go ahead and put the spring in. So we are going to be putting this ASG Ultimate M135 spring in. Like so, and then make sure you got a big old screwdriver so you can put that in there. in here and then we will do our shooting test okay so now we have that on there what we're going to do is make sure safe on safety and it's going to work on semi okay now we're going to plug our battery in give us the sound that we can shoot now we're obviously going to have to readjust the motor height to get this to shoot completely like it's supposed to. But that is all I have for you guys. That is how you guys build and put together your DSG. Make sure you cut down your gears. Make sure everything lines up right. And once you get everything set, you should be good. Thanks for joining me, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. It's free. If you don't like my channel, you don't have to. But I'll catch you guys in the next video.